Hey, good morning. Chuck here at the Apple Drains. Today we're installing a yard drain. It's uh, hooking up downspouts, catch facings in the yard, a lot of low spots. Really bright sun here in Charlotte in the morning. Hardest part about this job, two things. If you're doing it yourself, make sure that you mark your area. You can see we're going to actually discharge right here with a pop-up and you can see everything that's coming around here. We've got the telephone and cable, we've got the power. These telephone lines, the orange lines, are not very deep. So we've got to be really careful. There's also a sprinkler system in the backyard. And you can see the guys out here are already starting to work. But I'm gonna go ahead and set up the trencher. Remember, trenching is easy to do. You just have to be careful. The trencher is by far the best tool for this type of a job. This yard is full of rocks and you know to get the excavator back there would be really hard plus we're right up against the fence. Take a look. So before you trench, there's one right there. What we're looking for is sprinklers. Sometimes if you can find the line, you can see it. There's one right there. It's actually off at an angle, but if you can find that line, you can kind of try to avoid them. But more than likely, the sprinklers are right where you want to be. So we're going to go ahead and trench through here and see what we come up with. So we pretty much have our trenches all dug out. We're just making a place for catch basin here. Chuck cleaning it out. Paul's putting in a spot for the catch basin. Everything's trenched and ready to go here in the backyard. Also all done in the front. You know, when you're trenching or digging and you've got a lot of rocks, you can see these stones here. This is tough, a tough dig. Definitely the homeowner can do it. Just take your time. You need a pick. You can see even with the carefulest of careful, <laughs> you can break sprinklers. The trencher did not hit this. This was done with a shovel. And there's also a control line here that got cut. That makes even more fun to make your repair. But let's take a look at how to do this. With a good hacksaw, go ahead and cut out the section that's going to be replaced. Cut out both sides. So once you get your pipe cut, get yourself a rag and clean it off really good. Clean off the other side too. Go ahead and put glue in your coupling. Get one side on, nice and tight. I've already cut a piece of pipe. That's gonna be our next piece that we put on. Glue up your next coupling. Glue up your next coupling. Stick that onto your pipe. Let that harden up a little bit. This piece is gonna to go to the other end. And you can see it's gonna be a tight, tight fit. A real tight fit. Putting glue inside, putting glue inside the next coupling. Good amount. Now we're ready to try to bend it into place. We're gonna glue it up. And then with all your strength, you push it in place, push it down, and you should be set. So there's our repair, you can see over here. This is one inch line, typical sprinkler. This is kind of like the main line. Notice that this is three quarter inch. This runs to the heads that pop up in your yard. Next, we're gonna go ahead and clean this off and make the repair here where we've cut a couple of these wires. Hopefully there's only a couple of them cut. But let's do that next. So after you find out how many wires are cut, it's nice to have a pair of strippers. We're just gonna go ahead and strip these off and then we'll put new wire in there, kick on the sprinklers, see if it works. So 
So a good little lesson, you know, you tell your helpers or yourself, remember to be really careful, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to get that dirt out of the ground so you can lay your pipe. Sometimes there's things in your way. It's just, you know, you just, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> They do sell waterproof wing nuts, wire nuts, but I just like to put silicone caulking in there and it works a lot better, a little bit cheaper. Remember, we're not, we're not sprinkler guys and we don't claim to be, but we try to make repairs and should be prepared, you know, if you're gonna do something yourself for every situation. That's the ultimate do-it-yourselfer, right? So there's our wire repair to the sprinkler control line. Remember these lines, they control the valves that open up, let water pop up in different zones of your field. So I have the GoPro mounted on my forehead and I'm just gonna let it run. But basically, you can see we're setting up the catch basin. This is the very first catch basin of the system. And you notice that that was an end that was plugged. No water can come in. This side is where the water comes out, called the discharge. Now we're going to go ahead and hook up the T from the downspout, making that connection, measurement. Good hacksaw makes this go really quick. You can also use an X-Acto knife or even scissors to cut this pipe. Go ahead and snap everything together, really simple. I do like to put screws in uh, to help hold things together. Usually I'll put one, sometimes two, in each fitting as we go through the system. Hopefully you guys got that way, the right way. Continuing to lay pipe. Again, it just snaps in place. Now let's look at how we're hooked up to the downspout and make sure that's proper. Always step on your pipe as you try to cover it up so that no dirt can get underneath. Over here, we're just going a little bit deeper, trying to keep our fall. A lot of rocks in this yard, so you have to use the pick. Another catch basin here by that sprinkler repair. This is called an inline basin. So in other words, water runs through this catch basin. Not only does it pick up the surface water, but it's also allowing the water from another section to, to actually flow through it. Huh? And again, you can see a T sitting there. There's another downspout that we're going to attach. Make a small measurement. Everything snaps together, really simple, real quick. Now we're gonna bring our pipe from the downspout. We have to go underneath of all of the wires and sprinklers. Always remember to go underneath of things. Again, this snaps together. A little bit tough there, you know, where you have to be close underneath of a, a solid pipe, but you can do it. It's not that hard. Don't be afraid to get down on your knees. You know, a lot of people, they they see people working and they don't want to get dirty, but, you know, this is a, a job where you're working in the dirt. Wear some old pants. Don't be afraid to get down that dirt. It's just dirt. It's just soil. Continue to lay more pipe. Remember, this just snaps together. Really simple job once you've got your trench installed. The hard work, of course, is always trenching. The groundwork, the prep work. So here we're out at the sidewalk. I'm sliding the pipe under those wires. We're gonna connect it together. You can buy a coupling or you can do it like this. I like to cut off about four or six inches of pipe and then we just split it in half. Then we're gonna just push it and squeeze it together and it acts as an insert. As you slide this into the one side, it's going to expand and snap tight. Put the next side in, push and hold it, and it snaps tight and you're done. Now let's go out to the street and let's make the pop-up connection. We're using a PVC four inch 90 and a four inch grate. There is a connection for this that you could buy, but again, Take your hacksaw, slice the pipe, squeeze it tight together, and slide it into your fitting. This is actually very tight, 
just like that. However, I'm still going to add a screw to help hold that even tighter. You can also wrap it in duct tape after you've put all that together. Now we're just backfilling to get that set proper at the right height. Another downspout here on the side of the house. Again, going under sprinkler lines. Corrugated pipe's really great because it comes in 100 foot rolls, so you don't have to have any couplings. Slide it up onto the downspout. There is a footer there that you look carefully. You can see we had to push down on that to get it to go around that footer. On that downspout, the same thing. We're using a, a grate here at the, at the sidewalk. They did not want to cut the walk, so that's fine. We can discharge right here. Same thing. Slice the pipe, squeeze it together, slide it inside your fitting, and then add a screw to hold that tight in place. Once that's set, we need to bring that up to grade so that it discharges at the proper depth. We don't want it too low, and of course we don't want it too high because you don't want to hit it with a lawnmower. Backfill to hold it in place. One more from the garage here. This is a real important line because it picks up the bulk of the house actually. Slide your downspout or slide your pipe up onto the downspout, push it down tight, throw some dirt on things after you've completed the task to hold it in place. You can see this line just runs right out here to the sidewalk. This was a tight spot. There's a sprinkler right there and a head, but it's all the same. Measure, cut to length, slice your pipe a couple inches, squeeze it tight, slide your fitting on. Remember to put a screw in there to hold it in place. Once you've got that set to grade, let's go ahead and cover to hold it in place. This is a tight fit, so we're going to step real hard on that pipe right there. So hopefully you've learned a few tips on how to install this yourself. It's really not that hard. Once you're done, you backfill, and you're done. Congratulations, you've just installed your own yard drain. So the sprinkler repair, the sprinkler repair was good. Everything's in good working order now. We are going to continue to cover and move our excess soil, clean up the yard a little bit, and we'll be done. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.